this video, I'm going to show you how to make a game for the Oculus Quest. Um, one of the things that you will need if you have a VR ready computer and you want to be able to um, play when in the Unity Editor, I think it's a requirement for you to have the uh, Oculus software. All right, it looks like this. If you just go to oculus.com, you can download it. I don't think the Oculus integration package installs it automatically. Um, Oculus has a pretty decent um, getting started guide in how to set up Unity. If you just go to developer.oculus.com, there's documentation for Unity and Unreal. Um, so we just got to set up our development environment. Now, I already have mine set up um, for how I want, I think. Um, so it tells you all the minimum requirements you need, um, how to set up the Oculus device, tells you how to get the Android, set up the Oculus device, install the Unity editor, yada, 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 all the extra stuff that you need. You have to enable your device for development as well. So on the headset, you have to enable uh, development mode, or developer mode. You can just do that through USB, um, or I'm sorry, through your mobile app on your phone. Um, you also want to be able to hook it up to your computer and you'll get a pop-up in the headset. Just read through all these instructions and it shows you um, how to set it up. All right, it's not as complicated as it says here. Another trick you can do is go to search uh, SideQuest VR. So go to SideQuestVR.com, install their desktop app, and there's an option in there that'll automatically install all the ADB drivers that you need as well. Um, what also is nice about having SideQuest, it makes it real easy to install your APKs when you're done as well. This is a bit not the same order that I would set it up based on um, what we're seeing here in this uh, Oculus developer page. But here we go. Build settings is where you'd want to start. All right, so just follow this process, and I'm just going to point out a couple big things, but you know how to read, hopefully. So you can go in here and set this up yourself. So let's take a look at my Unity. Um, I think we're going to use this one. So if I go into Edit, Project Settings, and pull this up here. Um, one of the things that you'll need to be looking at is this XR plugin management. The previous steps will show you. Um, eventually, Oculus is going to be phasing out, I think, their Oculus integration package um, because Unity has its own XR interface now. This is not going to cover how to utilize the XR interface. Okay, This is going to go with solely just the Oculus Quest because that's what I'm comfortable with. Maybe down the road, I'll finally teach myself um, Unity XR. Um, and so follow the Oculus setup, and what you'll end up with is the XR plugin management. You'll have set up Oculus to be installed. And one of the big things you want is to make sure that Oculus is checked on both Android and on the PC. And then make sure initialize XR on startup is also checked so that when you try to, um, whenever you hit play in the editor, it'll build it, doesn't really build it, but it'll play it in the headset for you. Another thing when you actually are prepared for your build is the quality settings and that developer page from Oculus shows you how to set this up. Um, I actually probably set this up a little bit different than the developer page showed me just through another Google search. I deleted all my quality levels and just had one for Quest and set up exactly um, how I wanted to set it up for Quest. And um, one more tip, if you don't have a VR ready PC in I think is it other settings, where does it have, ah, so scripting backend. Um, if you don't have a VR ready PC, um, a friend of mine would probably scream me telling you this, but put your scripting back in as mono. Um, it'll make your builds a lot faster, uh, meaning it won't take as long to build. So if you're trying to build to a VR headset without a VR ready PC, um, set your scripting back into mono. It's a lot quicker, but when you're ready for your final product, make sure you use IL2CPP because um, it's a lot longer build time. But if you have a VR ready PC, you don't need to worry about that because you'll just be hitting play in the editor and within like five to 15 seconds, it'll show up. All right. I actually think my minimum API level is too high, but it's fine. Um, and then of course in, uh, preferences. No, that's not it. Um, in build settings, what's my build settings currently at on this? All right. So good. I'm on an Android build. And uh, it's not fetching my device because I don't have it plugged in right now. But yeah, so we're good to try this out. So um, we need a workspace, some way to start practicing. One of the easiest ways is to uh, search for the Polygon Starter Pack on um, Unity Asset Store. It's free. I have a lot of Cinti Studios packs. I love them. There's a lot of cool stuff. They're cheap. They're affordable. But don't be fooled. They're not really that low poly. 
Um, they have a simple series, which is their really low poly stuff that's still not that low poly. Um, and they have their polygon series, which I would say isn't really low poly at all. It just looks low poly. I mean, it's lower poly than really high-end PC stuff, but when it comes to VR, I mean, you need to make sure that you have very, very, very few polys. Um, but still, um, I've, I've been using Polygon Cinti stuff on several of my projects, um, and uh, I just, I increased the choline and put up some fog and um, do a lot of occlusion mesh stuff just to make sure that I can deal with the not really very low poly stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and um, can I put this right into Unity here? All right, I'm going to go ahead and open this in Unity and let's see what we got. Yep, open Unity Editor. Let's see if it opens the right one. It does. And it's fetching packages. Seems it may have failed. So let's just go to my assets. It's refreshing. Hey, it's right there. Polygon starter pack, import that. It didn't. It's on my other screen here. Um, we are going to go in, a lot of times when I import things, I don't import the demo scenes, but we're actually going to use the demo scene in this demo, so we might as well just pop that in too. All right, I think we're done. So, um, I'm just going to go into my project, and, uh, one other thing, again, you should have been following the, uh, Oculus developer page, but on top of, on the XR Unity, we'll just go back in there project settings. On top of the XR plugin management and adding Oculus, we also added the Oculus integration package. All right, it's available on the Unity Asset Store. Um, you'll want it. So if we go Oculus integration, all right, there's the Oculus integration package. You'll use that. All right, so in order to do anything in this demo, you need to have followed the configure Unity settings on the developer.oculus.com page. You need to have uh, the Oculus integrations installed. It's worth noting that I am in 2020.3.8 F1. I still prefer 2019 myself, um, but at some point in this series, I'm going to show you how you can use Unity's animation rigging to do um, IK, inverse kinematics, and control full-body characters on the Oculus Quest. All right, so let's see. Where's our polygon stuff in here? There we go, polygon starter. Let's see what we got in here. Let's see scenes, and let's just do our demo scene. All right. Let's just bring our game window over here. All right, so we got a lot of stuff in here. Oops, scene. Got a lot. I don't like the lighting in here at all. We're just going to live with the ugly lighting for now. It's going to look horrible in the headset, but we're just going to live with it. All right. Oh, do you have any, like, real people? I see beans. Why do we just have beans? I thought we had a real people in this. There's some real people. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to use this guy because he looks like a dude. Um, I'm going to take him and go to game object and clear parent. There we go. So we have our character. Um, I wonder if it's the... Uh, go back to my lights. Directional light, inspector. I am recording, right? Yeah. And uh, hard shadows? Jeez, the shadows are so bad. I don't know why it is, but we're just we're just gonna leave that for now. Um, we could go no shadows. Let's just go no shadows for now. It doesn't look very appealing, but those shadow lines are gonna drive me bonkers. All right, so here's our character. We're gonna use this guy to walk around, right? Um, ooh, good. His uh, pivot point is not on his center. It appears to be um, at the bottom of him. Don't always get that. So what we need now is to delete our main camera. Okay, because our camera is going to come from our, um, our Oculus stuff. So if we come back here into our project, and we go to Oculus, where's my uh, fancy side panel here? How do I edit my view? Search by label. There we go. Two column layout. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Uh, um, so let's come over here to Oculus, and if we go to VR, and we go to Prefabs, you can also use the search bar. We want player controller. Sorry about that. We want the OVR player controller. <laughs> Drop it in. Um, put it on here. Zero them out to be at the same location. And then bring them back out. Okay, so here's our OVR player controller. Um, as we can see, it's a bit low. 
So what comes on the OVR player controller is we have our character controller, which comes with a capsule collider. Um, it's got a player controller script um, and um, pretty much everything we would need to move around. But one problem is, is its pivot point is in the center, so it's now like way down here. Um, and we don't want that. Let's see what happens if we just raise it by 0.5. Um, about just one. Yeah, one looks good. All right, and um, we probably want to take our radius of our character controller. I want to take it down to about where the shoulders are on our little avatar here. All right, great. So now let's take our character controller and let's put it on our player. And you know what? Our character controller is a bit tall, but I'm just going to leave it because that gives like room for hats and stuff and it's already perfectly lined up. So we're just going to leave it. All right, so we could plug in the headset now and play. Um, but one more thing I'm going to do is anytime you're looking at the camera and what your camera settings are, even though this is your OVR camera rig, what you really care about is inside this tracking space, the center eye anchor. Um, this is your real camera. This is where you control clipping planes. This is where you can control um, culling, right? If there's something you don't want to see. Um, so like if you had a character that had... Um, its mesh was broken up into pieces. Like you had um, the body, its head was its own mesh. Um, in VR, you'd probably want to cull out that head. So you'd put the head on a layer and cull it out. Um, if you were doing multiplayer, you would do a pun, get his mine. If this is mine, then cull out the head. Or put, add a tag to the head of cull, put it on a, a culling layer or something like that. Um, but if you have a mesh like this, which I'm assuming this one is, is there is just one mesh. So what you can do when you're faced with this is you don't really want to have the head because you're going to see the ins you're not going to see the inside of the head because it's not a two-sided mesh, but you will see um, not exactly centered here, um, but you will see pieces of the body and whatnot. So um, one neat trick you can do is you when you have something with uh, a rig like this one does and it's got a skinned mesh, right? So if we look at the male, okay, he's got a skinned mesh, so he's got a rig and his mesh is skinned to his bones. So if we go in here to the spine, the spine, the spine, the neck, two heads. Oh, wow. They have, they've broken up the pieces of the head. But if we go to the head and we just scale this down to zero, boom, we have a headless avatar. All right, so it won't get in the way um, whenever we are inside VR because the camera is pretty much right on top of them. And um, I wonder if we took the neck and scaled it as down to zero as well, what would that look like? Yeah, let's do that. Let's scale the neck as well, and that'll look a little less odd in VR. All right. Um, we also need to make sure that our, uh, there's our player controller. We also need to make sure our camera rig is where we'd want it. And right now, our camera is coming out of his stomach. All right, so we want it to be coming out uh, more at eye level, which um, I should have left the neck and head on. So let's do that real quick. And let's just one, one, one. And then we can go back to the camera rig. And I mean, we're pretty much dead on. If we click on the center eye anchor, that's about where he is. If I back up, see that's the back of his head. Maybe just a little higher would be where his eyes are. And then let's also put the camera just slightly in front of him. Um, because if we put it like right center of the head, um, when you look at your arms, they're going to be too far in front of you. So we want to make sure that we are outside the head. Probably there is decent. You can always adjust it however it works best for you. All right, so now back to my neck and head. And let's just, uh, actually, you know what? I could probably zero out the neck and that would take care of the head for me, right? Zero, zero, zero. Sure, because it's a child. Fantastic. All right. So, um, do we, do we just try it? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we should just try it and see what happens now. All right. So I got to get my VR headset and again, um, I don't, you can see the Oculus software is not quite open yet on my computer, um, but it'll probably open itself as soon as I plug in my Oculus quest. Okay. And so right now inside my headset, it's saying guardian not found. Um, so, um, I'm assuming if you're developing for VR, you know how to set up your Guardian for Quest and all that. All right, so now I have a, a pop-up on my screen because I'm plugged into my computer to enable Oculus Link. And what that does is it allows your Quest to act as a PC VR headset. 
which if you're looking at this video now, you probably already know this because you know a lot about the quest. All right, so now what's happening now is um, Oculus Home or Oculus Rift Home, or I don't know what their dashboard is, is now loading on my headset. Yep, see the Oculus logo, and there's the big white. Um, there it is. All right, it's loading. All right, so my um, link is all set up now. So if I'm lucky, I should now just be able to click play, and I should be in my my world hopefully there we go you can see now i'm looking around all right it actually doesn't look bad with all the shadows off in here and um look at that and if you look down at my feet as i turn in the real world because my mesh is a child of my um ovr controller when my in real world when i move around you know it makes sense that my mesh would move around all right, um, let's see if we can move. Yeah, so the OVR controller has built in um, controls. So I didn't have to program anything and I'm already able to walk around the world. It's a bit ugly and choppy. Um, I don't know if it's my computer because I am uh, recording. I wonder if snap turns enabled. Yeah, I'm snap turning um, on the right joystick. So um, Oculus with their integrations package, I mean, this is a pretty nice prefab. Now, the only thing downside is I, I'm not really animating well, and I can't see my hands. Um, I could add some prefabs where I can see my hands, um, but they're not actually tied to this character right now. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I don't know if you could tell that my computer was getting a headache there at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so far, without doing any coding whatsoever, we have been able to um, move around in the Quest headset in our little game. Next time what we're gonna do is make sure that we can figure out a way to see our hands, see the controllers, put in some hand models, lots of cool stuff like that. So let's see where this takes us in the next episode.